Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Ox Talks. It is Tuesday, November 28th, 2023. Getting a little late start today with posting the video. I had a long day at the office, a lot of client meetings and uh, tasks that just took up uh, many, many hours. Uh, I did draft a, a new lawsuit today for partition of real property. And that is when you have co-owners of property that have a dispute and one doesn't want to sell, one does want to sell, or they just can't get uh, get over the hurdle. Uh, partition is a way that you can have a court get involved and basically force the sale of real property uh, and have the net proceeds divided among the co-owners. Uh, it's not preferable, but sometimes you have uh, a co-owner that digs in their heels. Obviously, uh, every jurisdiction is going to be different with laws on partition. But if you have a dispute over real property co-ownership, uh, there are usually remedies that can be sought through the court. Thank you for watching the video. Thank you for su subscribing to the channel. If you're enjoying the content, uh, please not only subscribe, hit the like button and the bell notification, but please share the videos with family, friends, and colleagues so we can continue to educate people about these very, very serious and important topics. Um, just on a side note, I'm not discussing real estate per se today, but I was a gentleman that I work out with. My workout class is a top-notch residential realtor out here in my local community. And he told me tonight that real estate is down 35% year over year in this, in, this, in this county, in this local community. So things are getting bad. Prices are just things are dropping and it's getting serious. Okay, the title of the video is, is Guns and Gold. Uh, the order was, was not uh, uh, happenstance. I believe it needs to be in that order. But let's address gold first. It has been on a terror in the last few days. Last I checked a few minutes ago, spot gold was up around $2,050 per troy ounce. Silver was up around $25.18. Uh, those are those are major moves. If you check Kitco, the price is one thing. CNBC it shows sometimes a different spot price. I usually use Kitco. Uh, it's the more conservative number, and that's the one I'm reporting to you right now. Uh, I saw an article on Bloomberg earlier today. Uh, it was written by a guy named John Stepek, and it says, "Is gold finally headed for an all-time high?" It says, "Last I wrote," he's referring to himself about gold in September which we were marveling at how well it had managed to hold up during a year in which interest rates had risen relentlessly. And that's true. I mean, we're on one of the largest and quickest rate hike cycles ever. And gold has performed uh, amazingly from my perspective. It has not gotten beaten down. Look where we're at right now. And we're at, at, at uh, the rate of interest rates are high and they're probably going higher. So usually the opportunity cost of holding gold is greater as rates are rising because somebody can take money, put it into a CD or a money market or even a savings account and earn a greater rate of return than holding physical gold would otherwise provide. As interest rates start to come down, uh, you know, gold becomes more attractive because people believe, well, if I'm not going to be giving up that much interest, I might as well have, you know, physical gold in my possession. The article says, since September, gold has perked right up. It's one of the better performing commodities, up 10.5% year to date, compared to 4% when he had last uh, checked in with it in September. of uh, in September. So 10.5% year to date return, folks, uh, it's no joke. It says, gold has hit and bounced off its all-time high three times now. The all-time high was $2,075, excuse me, $2,074.88. And that was in August of 2020. So we are within $25 or so of gold hitting its all-time high this evening. Uh, keep an eye on this. It, it looks like it's, uh, it's going to try to break through. I mean, I'll share, you know, I have my views on why it's it's spiking the last few days, but nothing really bad has even happened yet, guys. I mean, yes, we're seeing the economy, you know, slowing down. We're seeing real estate start to crash. 
We're seeing consumers uh, get further in the hole. Inflation continues to be a problem. Interest rates are still very high, but there's been you no know, no you know major um, no major events that would drive gold this fast this high. It says uh, the the technical analysis suggests that if and when gold gets back above two thousand seventy five an ounce two thousand seventy five dollars per ounce, it'll likely go a good bit higher. It says. What is driving gold higher? It says the first most obvious reason for gold's most recent rally is that the market thinks interest rates, specifically U.S. interest rates, have peaked. While rising rates did not turn out to be disastrous for gold on this occasion, it certainly helps to have that headwind removed. And not only you know are, is the market pricing in that the rate heights, hikes have peaked, but there were a couple of Fed officials today that came out and said that they're actually looking at uh, the odds of rate cuts into next year. Now, look, do I believe that? I'm not going to say that I do. Um, we'll have to wait and see. But obviously, if it does play out that way, uh, gold will continue to rise, in my opinion. It's not financial advice. It's not legal advice. Uh, I just, uh, that's my assessment of it. So secondly, the market isn't going full-blown bond vigilante yet, but it's aware that there's a lot of debt around and it's not clear how that is going to be repaid. We discuss it all the time. The debt is at all-time highs. The national debt, the uh, the amount of interest uh, servicing debt, consumer debt, student loan debt, everything is at all-time highs. It says gold has no counterparty risk. Its value does not depend on someone else's creditworthiness and central banks, despite everything, still own a lot of it for that reason. And you've heard the term, be your own central banker, be your own central bank. Hold this stuff in the physical form. Uh, it, again, there's no counterparty risk. Uh, and, you know, if you need to liquidate it, it's, it, it is very liquid. It's a tier one asset. Uh, you can sell it through coin shops. You can sell it through the online bullion dealers. Uh, there, there are many, many ways that if you hold physical gold and you need to convert it to cash for some reason, you can do so. Since finally, the, uh, finally, uh, geop geopolitics is messy. Uh, Jim Reed over at Deutsche Bank used a useful term in the research uh, team's 2024 outlook the other day, non-linearity risk, and so talks about, look at we can't, uh, we can't, uh, uh, let's say, ignore the possibility that something breaks in the financial system, which triggers a recession. I think we are in a recession and we're going to go deeper into the recession in 2020-24. Uh, this very well may bode well for gold. So if you decide to purchase uh, physical gold, there are premiums. I checked a couple of the online bullion dealers earlier. SD Bullion is one. Uh, AppMex is another one. Uh, SD Bullion had one ounce gold eagles uh, for about $130 over spot at $2,187. AppMex, that's between one and nine coins. AppMex had uh, the coins over uh, 2,200 an ounce at about $151 premium per ounce. So what's going to be interesting to see is as the prices continue rising, uh, will the premiums start to get jacked back up? You know, it's, it's counterintuitive, but people always go and they buy when it's when it's when it's going up. Uh, a lot of people did not buy when it was going down or staying stagnant. That obviously was the time to be accumulating it. And now you're going to be paying over two thousand two hundred dollars mostly for a one ounce gold a U.S. gold coin. Uh, you know, do you chase it or do you sit back and see if this is a temporary bump with a pullback coming? Uh, that's something you have to decide for yourself. Uh, the second topic for today I'll address is the is the guns. Uh, and this says uh, this article off of Zero Hedge this afternoon it says FBI conducts record number of background checks on Black Friday as gun demand surges. So the National Shooting Sports Foundation, the NSSF reported FBI conducted a record-breaking number of National Instant Criminal Background Check System, NICS checks on Black Friday. It says NSSF said FBI NICS completed 200, 200, excuse me, 214,913 background checks on Black Friday, the highest number recorded for the most popular shopping day of the year besides Cyber Monday. 
It noted the figure also includes background checks for other firearm related purchases, such as approvals for concealed carry permits. I will tell you, I went by a local uh, gun store today and out here it's, it's called Turner's. There are a lot of them in Southern California. Uh, and the parking lot was literally jammed. You could not get in the parking lot. And evidently the CCW, the Concealed Carry uh, Weapons Permit class, was being held inside and it was packed. It was sold out. So if that's any indication of what's going on in other parts of the country, uh, you know, it's something we all need to be keeping our, keeping, uh, our eyes on. Uh, you know, I am a big pro proponent of security, being able to protect yourself and your family. Uh, I hope that you are too. If you are, take it seriously. These tools do not uh, operate themselves. Uh, it, it is not a magical wand. It, it, you have to understand and be proficient and be trained in using them. Otherwise, guess what? You're a, you're a bigger liability, in my opinion, than if you didn't own one in the first place. So uh, if you're going to take that step, which I certainly recommend you do, obviously comply with all laws in your jurisdiction, uh, but get, get trained. Uh, it, it, it is a skill that uh, you have to attain and you have to retain. It is a perishable skill. It says last week's 214,913 background checks surpassed the 192,749 on Black Friday from 2022 and the 187,585 checks on Black Friday 2021. So the, the number of individuals seeking to purchase firearms in this country is increasing. What does that tell you? Well, it, it, it tells you anecdotally that people uh, are hopefully waking up. They understand what's going on in this country with crime uh, and uh, the, the increase of crime that we are seeing sweep this nation. And hopefully they're, they're, they're trying to uh, they are exercising their Second Amendment rights to protect themselves and their family and be prepared. It says the background checks reported by the FBI are in keeping with the trends NSSF has seen throughout the year. Firearm, re firearm sales remain consistently strong with over a million per month for more than four years running, explained Joe Bartosi, NSSF president and CEO. Bartosi continued, these figures tell us that there is a continued strong appetite for lawful firearm ownership by law-abiding Americans and that firearm manufacturers across the country continue to deliver uh, the quality firearms our customers have come to expect. So, guns and gold, guys. Uh, I hope that the topic was informative today for you. Uh, I came from a workout this evening, one-hour workout. Uh, I hope that you all took the chance, took the opportunity to get a workout in today, get your steps in, try to do some strength training, keep your water and your hydration levels up. A friend of mine uh, went to the ER the other day, almost had to take an ambulance ride after a, a workout. He got severely dehydrated. Uh, his his uh, his blood pressure spiked. He couldn't get his blood his couldn't get his uh, his blood pressure to come back down. Uh, pretty scary, folks. So hydration uh, is really really important. But you've got to get the exercise in and keep your heart healthy. With that being said, we're at about 13, 14 minutes. Uh, I will see all of you tomorrow. Bye.